Hey everyone, my name's Harry Atomic and today we're going to explore maybe some of the lesser known parts of the Xbox One and that is probably a horrible intro, but who cares? Today we're going to see if we can replace your PC with an Xbox One. Now, that is a pretty bold claim. It's a pretty tall order. I mean, PCs can do a lot. I'm on a PC right now. I do a lot on a PC. And the question that I wanted to ask myself is, would it be possible for everyday users to replace their PC with an Xbox One? So in order to tackle this question, what I did first of all was make a list of what I feel a normal user would reasonably do with their PC, and then went ahead and tried to see if I could do each one of those on an Xbox One. So here's the list of things that I came up with that a person I believe would reasonably do with a computer. There's messaging, email, games, streaming, entertainment, music, movies and office software. But I think I have a pretty good list here. So let's go through them one by one and see if an Xbox One is up to the task of replacing your PC. So one of the big things that I wanted to check was messaging. Discord is a pretty huge thing for me. I use Discord all the time. I have links down in the description in my Discord as well if you want to like join up and chat and say hello and it's awesome, yeah. So the first app that I installed was an app called Quarrel. Now Quarrel is a free download from the App Store on your Xbox One and it allows you to connect to Discord the same way that you would on your computer or your phone. I was able to navigate my own Discord and send some messages. I was able to watch some videos. I was also able to move between different channels. It was pretty much just the Discord experience in an app on your Xbox One. So I would say as far as messaging goes, it's a pretty complete experience. Now in saying that, the version of Quarrel that I had it did give me a few crashes, however, I looked them up and it seems that the developers update this pretty regularly, so I'd imagine there would be fixes coming for some of the more common issues. The next thing that I wanted to try was email. Now, I use email a lot. I run my own business, I do YouTube stuff, I have personal email stuff to do as well. Especially now we're coming up to the holidays, I'm getting loads of like tracking numbers for different parcels I'm ordering as gifts. So email is a huge thing that I try to stay on top of, and I was able to use an app called Mail on X to keep track of all my emails on my Xbox. Now this is a paid app and I know that paying for like an email client is probably a bit rubbish considering you can just do it through your browser but I wanted to actually find an app that would do it where possible so I decided to give this a go. Now for completeness you don't have to pay for it. Uh, it is possible to access your emails through the Edge browser on Xbox. However I just wanted to get an app to do it just so that I could test it out so that I could show it off in this video I suppose. So in order to test this properly I wanted to throw it a bit of a curveball and actually sign up using an email address that wasn't like your typical Gmail or Hotmail. So I decided to use my own personal domain email to log in and see if it worked. And it worked flawlessly. I was able to send and receive emails on there using my own custom domain. And it was an overall nice experience, especially when paired with a keyboard. So email for me gets a big tick. Games. Now, games is obviously the wheelhouse of the Xbox. You are able to play games on your Xbox the same way that you can play games on your PC. Don't come after me, PC mattress. I know that there's probably a million reasons why you wouldn't want me saying the same. However, you can play games on your Xbox the same as you can play games on your PC. So services like Game Pass make it great for people to actually game on the Xbox. You can go ahead and just download games through your subscription or you can buy physical copies if your Xbox One has a disk drive and just play loads of games. So definitely getting a tick for that one. Next on my list was streaming. Now streaming is a pretty big one for me. I make videos on YouTube but I also stream over on Mixer. There's a wee link down here as well if anybody wants to join up and follow me on Mixer. I'm getting really good at this YouTube thing now, all this plugging and all that stuff, it's crazy. So I wanted to break this into two categories. I wanted to make sure that you could watch streams and actually stream as well. Now, Mixer is integrated into the Xbox One, so watching and streaming are pretty much a normal occurrence if you are on Mixer like I am. Now, there is a dedicated Twitch app that also allows you to watch and stream from your Xbox One. However, I think that having the Mixer tab and actually being integrated into the Xbox One's OS kind of makes Mixer a winner for me. But either way, whichever one of the two major platforms you decide to stream on, the Xbox One has definitely got you covered. So that's getting a big thumbs up from me as well. So the next thing I had on my list was entertainment. For this, I decided to try a whole list of different entertainment services to see if the Xbox One could hold up. Now with a dedicated YouTube app, you're just able to log on to YouTube and just watch videos. You can even go on and search for, I don't know, some guy called Harry Atomic and I don't know, maybe subscribe to his channel if that's the 
type of thing that you like doing. But other than that, the YouTube experience on Xbox was pretty flawless. With a native dedicated app, I mean, it's pretty much not going to get any better than that on the platform. Also, there are other streaming services on here like Netflix or BBC iPlayer that you can just download the client, sign in and work away. Now, also, there are other streaming services like Crunchyroll that are a bit more specific. But I think that the takeaway here is that there are an absolute ton of entertainment services available on your Xbox One that you can just dive in and just enjoy yourself. So definitely for the entertainment and the movies category, those are two thumbs up from me. So the second last thing we have on our list is music. Now, I followed a few polls on Twitter. For some reason, they keep popping up in my Twitter feed that ask people which streaming service that they like the most. And it seems for the most part that Spotify is just top dog when it comes to streaming music. So I decided to go on and take a look at the native Spotify app on the Xbox One. And it was amazing. You're just able to log on using your normal credentials. You can go ahead and just play whichever music that you want that's available on Spotify. But the real creme de la creme for me is that you're able to actually exit the app and go ahead and play your game and the music will continue in the background. Now, this is something that is absolutely brilliant for people who maybe want to get their own soundtrack over games and create some unique combinations to say the least, as well as potentially making yourself a stream soundtrack and pairing it with playing your game live on Mixer. Now, one thing that I do want to mention as well, I didn't actually record it, but it is also possible to load up a USB with movies and music and play it that way. However, I wanted to check out more of the streaming side of things, which is why it's not properly included in this video, but that's also an option. So another wee sort of thumbs up, I suppose. A little Orange Cassidy thumbs up for anybody that watches wrestling. Now, the last thing on my list is Office Software. This is a big one for me because I do a lot of office work as well. I keep a lot of documents. I use a lot of spreadsheets and stuff for like business use. So office software for me is a pretty big deal. And for the most part, I use Google Docs. So I decided to go ahead and see if there were any office solutions available on the Xbox One. And while it seems I was out of luck on the app side, Google Docs is pretty much a browser thing anyway. So I decided to go ahead and load up Edge and try and log on to Google Drive. And it seems that it works perfectly. I was able to go on and create a new doc. I was able to type. Uh, just a tad bit, I only realized this halfway through recording as well, but make sure if you're using Edge to go into your settings and turn off the overscan for specific apps because then it stops it from having that border around the outside. Just a wee tip for anybody that's having that same issue that I'm having. I decided to go on and create a spreadsheet as well and it worked perfect. I was able to enter values. I was able to use formulas. It's just exactly what I want from a Google Doc experience. So for me, that is a massive one. The ability to dive in and like edit Google Docs and create new docs and view what's in my Google Drive is massive. So yeah, definitely a big thumbs up from me. And that's the entire list. I think that I've proven today that you can sort of replace your PC with an Xbox One. I don't know. I'm pretty much making a large sweeping statement that I know that some people are going to disagree with. So if you disagree or if you agree, then let me know down in the comments below. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, then please consider getting subscribed to the channel. I try to do as many like fun Xbox things as I can and I just have loads of fun making videos and post them on YouTube. So if these are the type of thing that you enjoy, then consider getting subscribed, hit the like button, all that usual jazz. Also, as well as YouTube, I like to stream on Mixer every now and then. I like to play Minecraft with everybody. We play some random games every now and then. It's just a good old time where we can all hang out and chat and kind of let our hair down a wee bit. So if that sounds like something that you would enjoy doing, then dive on over to Mixer and make sure to follow me on there to stay up to date. Anyways, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.